giving me a ride to the airport like a true friend. Appreciate you, man. In this video, we're looking at the new 2022 Indian FTR, which has some big updates from the previous model year. The features of this bike include a 1203cc liquid-cooled V-twin power plant putting out 120 horsepower and quite a bit of torque. With an inertial measurement unit, or IMU, you get three ride modes, lean angle stability and traction control, cornering ABS, and wheelie control with rear lift mitigation. The exhaust on all S and R models is now Acropovic. You get a full color touchscreen TFT display with Bluetooth connectivity on certain models and also a few new color options. So a few of the updates the Indian made that make a significant difference in the overall feel of the bike when it all comes together include a 1.4 inch drop in seat height, standing at a total height of 30.7 7 inches, new 17 inch wheels versus previous year's 19 inches, giving you many more options for tires. They reduced the rake to 25.3 degrees, making it even more nimble. 100 millimeter trail, 120 millimeter front suspension, 120 millimeter travel rear suspension, an overall length of 87.5 inches, slimmer bars at 32.5 inch, which makes it feel even more comfortable. Refined throttle mapping for a smooth, predictable power band and improved airflow, plus rear cylinder deactivation to mitigate heat. Now, this video is a test ride and it's meant to communicate to you all how the bike feels but if you'd like more information and specs on the 2022 indian ftr please feel free to check out the link down in the description below after the video and if you guys enjoy motorcycle content like this please be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button big thanks once again to indian motorcycles for the opportunity let's get to the test ride all right what's up blockheads we are test riding the indian ftr motorcycles today for the indian press event they got me on this one here has my name on it so that means it's mine right Everybody starting up. One button. There we go. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of this bike, guys. Bro, this is awesome. Look at all these FTRs. <laughs> all right, so I guess we can go over controls here real quick for those of you that uh, don't know about the FTR. Um, traditional for Indian. Left side, pass light. So in the trigger switch, press and hold for the pass, press it up to stay on. You got your cruise control, you got your left indicator, right indicator, press and a cancel, press and hold for hazards. Right side, you've got your menu selection for the display there, mileage, trip one, trip two, RPMs, voltage, ambient temp, average mile per gallon, instant miles per gallon. So we're gonna leave it on uh, RPM for show. Indicators all in here, miles per hour, I think it said like 170 miles on it. Yeah, odometer. So I'm gonna reset that actually second one just to see how far we ride today. Here we go. Go ahead and get my mirror adjustment on. So we are pretty much in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, and we are working our way out of town. There's a bit of construction they were saying, so we're just gonna work our way through this to get to the uh, the nice roads. This is definitely something new for me. Like we're pacing this like uh, train going through downtown. So maybe we'll montage it. Oh yeah. Oh man, the reduced seat height on this thing makes such a big difference. It's the rear cylinder deactivating. 
So that rear cylinder deactivating, it does cause a noticeable sound coming from the bike, which is pretty interesting, but definitely helps to keep it cool. Cool little area, artsy part of town. Stop number one, I think. Yeah. Where's the kickstand? There you are. All right. Stop one. Let's get some photos. Oh, this is so cool, man. <laughs> Badass. <laughs> what do you think so far? It's gonna be fun. As compared to yours, noticeable difference? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I noticed a huge difference. Uh, I can actually tiptoe both sides. The other one I have to kind of get off. A little bit lower. I feel like it's lower. Yeah. I actually feel it. Which is a good thing because then it feels like I can move in a little bit more. It's yeah. A little more nimble. It's probably the tires, too. Yeah, a lot more confidence, lower speed maneuvering for sure yeah. when it's that height. Coming to a stop, I'm actually able to flat foot it versus the last one. Tip the tone. What do you think, Doodle? That was so zippy. Yeah? Oh my gosh, I was like... <gasps> How do you feel with the height of it? The height's not bad at all. Yeah. As long as I do, yeah, one foot down. What do we call that? Flamingoing it? Flamingoing it? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of upright for sport, but... You should definitely play around with the different ride modes. It's a, a noticeable change in the throttle response. Oh yeah? I don't want to do sport. <laughs> no. <laughs> You read a, a speed triple, like you should, I know. you should know that. I know. Oh, the carbon, it's beautiful. All right, we'll take you guys through this little photo up ride. Man, this is a first, this is super cool. <laughs> Indian Motorcycles, once again, thank you guys for the opportunity, I really appreciate it. This is, this is really neat, man. Man, a minivan is good for this kind of thing. I've tried to do this in the back of my truck, which is a Tacoma. It sucks. I have a Tundra and I built out a porch. Yeah. That's perfect. Nice. Oh, that was nuts. <laughs> Headed to the second spot, which I think they're saying is like an hour away or so. They're separating us into groups, group one and two, so that the uh, packs are a little bit more manageable. <laughs> you win. You have the different modes. I have nothing. Oh. Mine's like the base. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Woo. I'm not going to bore you guys too much with getting out of downtown. We will resume recording whenever we get just outside of uh, Phoenix. So we are outside of Phoenix now on the highway. Get to actually ride this thing for a prolonged period of time at sustained speeds of 70, 80 miles an hour. Oh, thought it. Feels really nice. Very responsive. I mean, you can pretty much downshift and catch it right back up. The power on it is awesome. Very, very good. I was downshifting into fourth at 70 miles an hour. Obviously, like, there's nothing in the front to, like, catch the wind or block the wind, rather, so you're pretty much catching all the wind. I'm really curious as to, like, they have, like, a little windscreen thing that goes right there, and so I'm really curious as to how that would, uh, like, if it would make a big difference. we got Doodle on a motorcycle over here. Behind me, we've got Bo from Chase on Two Wheels, and then directly behind me, we got Dan Dan the Fireman. Wish I was connected to one of them on, like, a Senna so he could do, a, a, like, a rolling start. Man, this is super cool. The landscape out here just so different from Florida. Florida is just all flat sand. We've actually got like mountains and stuff sticking up here. That's just awesome. Oh, I got my first Arizona bug. So now we're going to be riding on this for a bit, but we're headed to the mountains, which you guys can see there in the distance. So we'll resume once we get into some mountains.
cattle great. Coming to stop number two. This is beautiful, guys. Wow. This is so incredible. Grab my uh, GoPro oh, out your out your bag there. Right. Dan Dan is my mule for the day. Yeah, <laughs> I got everything, man. Thanks, bro. And if you need anything charged, I got a little power back. Oh, nice. All right, guys, we're back on it. Woo! This shit is awesome so far. All right, and we're off. Super cool little pit stop. Oh, I didn't even get to take any pictures. This spot was freaking beautiful. We are on our way to the next location. A little bit of a decent ride there, and then we're gonna pull over, and I think we're kind of splitting up from there. Can't quite recall what they said, but I figured now would be a good time to go ahead and give some kind of initial thoughts and feedback on actually getting to ride the new Indian FTR. I guess normally how I do my test ride video is like I'm gonna I'm gonna deviate a little bit from that. We're talking about the feeling, like what does the bike make me feel like and how do I feel on the bike? So in terms of comfort, I actually feel pretty good. Solid dude. The seat could probably be a little bit softer. I think with the uh, FTR carbon, like the seat's a little different, but it's really not a huge point of concern at all. I was starting to feel it a little bit on the ride out here, and then I was kind of starting to feel it a little bit in my back. But once again, like this is a bike that was built for flat track racing. It does set more like a naked upright, but it's one of those things like, yeah, you can do some miles on it, and they actually make attachments for it to where if you want to, you know, carry some more stuff, like, you know, Dan Dan the Fireman back there, he's got a couple of optional attachments, accessories that help him carry a bit more gear. So it can be done. Overall, the ergonomics of it are pretty comfortable. I don't feel like any pains like in my legs or anything. I don't feel cramped up. I'm five foot 10. I think Bo said he's like five seven. So that's what, that's what Bo looks like on it. They shorten the bars a bit. So the bars aren't as wide. They narrow down the bars a bit. It feels really good. I do remember with the last FT it feeling a little bit like it was more out but like it's not a huge difference but it's still noticeable definitely makes the bike feel a bit more responsive you know having your your arms a little bit more in on it or your hands a little bit more in on it in regards to the power I think it goes without saying whenever you're on this bike it feels like I don't even know like the the power is just there is no lack of it that's for damn sure even in like sixth gear you know whenever we were on the highway I'm in sixth gear pulling on it to like get through traffic and such no lack of power on this bike at all it's awesome it's very very responsive on note of responsive one of the things that Indian addressed in this update is the throttle. So previously, the throttle was a little twitchy. People talked about feeling like it didn't feel really like too smooth. And like, I kind of just thought like, ah, I guess that's the way like a flat track racer bike feels. Cause I mean, I didn't have any experience with flat track racing. But the throttle now, so much better, much more linear smoother which makes it more predictable power delivery it's not on off you know it's it just feels it feels really good now it doesn't feel like i'm gonna get bucked off of this thing which is good like i said that instills confidence and confidence makes people better riders i think that's probably one of the most noticeable differences as well as the seat height so like when coming to a stop and stuff I can actually flat foot it now, 5'10", you know, with boots on, a little bit taller. I actually feel really confident with like coming to a stop now because there's not that, you know, you're not flamingoing it, as Bo says. Hey, guys, it's a really good feeling bike. Like it, uh, I'm looking forward to kind of getting on it like after we break off a bit and that'll probably be like a separate episode, but like easy to maneuver. The braking feels awesome. It's got freaking Brembo's on it. Like, <laughs> hey, this, is, this is a nice bike, guys. Those are the signs I like to see. 
So I have been looking towards like a naked upright bike and I was thinking about doing the Yamaha MT-09, which I'm going to test whenever I get back. But having been able to ride this in an environment where I can actually ride it is really making me put this in the running. And so I'll have to make my decision after having an MT-09 for a little bit. But yeah, this thing feels, it feels good. That should tell you something right there. It's like uh, one of those questions like, would you buy it? Yeah, I would buy it. Usury Mountain Regional Park? Usur Usury? Usury? Look at this landscape, guys. This is amazing. Oh my god, look at that house. That's a, yeah, that is beautiful. This one at the very top, too. <laughs> Dan and the fireman. <laughs> this bike feels so good. So we're making our way closer to the mountains. I figured it'd be a good time to kind of turn the camera back on because this road is a little rough, which is a good opportunity to talk about the suspension. So the suspension on this thing, it's a little stiff. That's kind of to be expected with this style of motorcycle. It's not going to be the most like cushy soft thing ever. That is one of the things that I remember about the, the old FTR. Uh, now it does have less travel in the front, so I would assume that's going to make it feel probably a little bit stiffer, but you're definitely feeling the bumps in the road, but it's it doesn't feel like, like the suspension doesn't feel like it's not predictable. It's not like dipping and diving and feeling like terrible at all. So not a bad thing. It's one of those to be expected, you know, with this style of bike. It's a freaking FTR. It's a flat track racing motorcycle. So it's like, it's not going to feel like a Cadillac. Whew. Good bump. Look at that, guys. Flat footing. It's awesome. It's on the last one. That did not happen. So the roads got a bit more technical and the views got a lot more beautiful. When going through the footage, I realized I didn't really give my final thoughts on the Indian FTR that I was riding. So I was given the base model FTR for this ride, which they say runs a standard tune on it. You're not able to change the ride modes on the base model. With that in mind, the base model was more than enough bike for me. And I've ridden the FTR R Carbon as well in sport mode, which I'll release that video soon as well with my thoughts. Overall, I was incredibly impressed at how much the changes Indian made to this bike impacted the overall rideability of it. The two biggest changes I noticed were the lower seat height, which adds confidence in low speed maneuvering, and comfort when coming to a stop. The refined throttle mapping as compared to previous years is leaps and bounds better. It makes for a linear and predictable power delivery, which once again instills confidence while riding it. The narrower bars keep your arms and wrists from becoming fatigued, the shorter wheelbase, decreased rake and trail, make it incredibly and easily maneuverable. The Brembo brakes are a great answer to the powerful liquid cooled 1203cc V twin in it, which gives it plenty of grunt with both horsepower and torque. The suspension is a little stiff, but in my opinion, it's not noticeable unless you're on some really terrible roads. And in my opinion, you know, that's to be expected with a flat track racing inspired bike. Now, I always try to offer a criticism and I think for this bike, I have two. Whenever we got to our destination, I realized I only had one bar left in my gas gauge, and I feel like we really hadn't gone too far. I didn't check my odometer at the time, but via Google Maps, kind of tracing back our route, I believe we had gone about 90 miles. Now, this isn't a huge issue as there's gas stations all over the place, but if you're looking to do some distance with it, you might feel like you're stopping for gas pretty often. I also wasn't taking it easy and babying the throttle, as you guys could tell, so that might also have something to do with it. My second criticism is the seat, which isn't that bad, but again, on some longer trips, it leaves some to be desired. I started feeling my lower back get a bit tight after our longest lug on the highway, but that was easily relieved by pulling over and checking out some of the great views, stretching it out, and continuing on. I think the best way to communicate to you all my thoughts on this bike would be to tell you that I previously rode the 2020 Indian FTR 1200 S and after riding that bike, I thought it was cool, but based on the height and twitchy throttle, it's not a bike that I would consider owning. After having ridden the 2022 FTR, the updates they've made to this bike have changed my mind. Indian Motorcycles has listened to its customers and implemented changes that make this bike much more rider friendly, which is awesome because it's a great bike that I think can be enjoyed by all. In the video where I rode the 2020 FTR, the old one, I got off that and I said, this thing would get me arrested. Having <laughs> 
Having ridden the 2022 FTR nearly 200 miles, I can confidently say, I still think this bike would get me arrested. It's so damn fun, it's really hard to stay off that throttle, and the confidence that it just instills in you, I mean, you feel like kind of pushing it to its limits. Pushing yourself to your limits, if that. So, hats off to Indian Motorcycles for the awesome updates with this new model. It makes an absolute world of difference as compared to the Gen 1. After this video, I ended up actually riding a 2019 Indian FTR Rally on the way back, which was a great comparison. I'll have that video coming out soon, as well as my interview with Reed, the Vice President of Indian Motorcycles. I hope this video was insightful for you all out there that might be considering an Indian FTR. The fact that I'm considering buying one now should tell you my opinion on it. So if you guys have any questions though, please feel free to post them up in the comments down below. I'll answer to the best of my knowledge. Thanks again to Indian Motorcycles for the opportunity to come check out and ride the new 2022 FTR. I greatly appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button for me. It helps out the channel quite a bit. And if you guys aren't subscribed and you enjoy motorcycle content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell icon while you're over there so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. We're also giving away a couple motorcycles, so if you guys are interested in getting in on that, check out the link down in the description below. Till next time, you guys ride safe out there, stay vigilant. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.